Well, everybody's coming in. My name is Peter Lowe. Uh, I just want to thank Simon and Kuda for this opportunity at talk here and thank them for uh, this amazing conference. Um, yeah, so let's just dive right in. So the, what do you see here? On the left is a carburetor and on the right is a fuel injector. Uh, why am I showing this? Well, both of them are doing basically the same thing. It's to give fuel to an in internal combustion engine. Uh, in, the, in the 80s, uh, the, uh, US, the US and Japan started with emission control laws. So uh, at that time, the, f fuel, uh, the fuel injector uh, controlled emissions much better than carburetors. So peop uh, car manufacturers started moving over to, uh, to fuel injectors. So looking at our uh, public APIs today, basically we, uh, it's con it consists of uh, some older ones will be soap, and the new ones will be, uh, will be rest. Um, these are concepts that started in the early 2000s, late 90s. And, uh, um, but, uh, but the landscape changed a lot. We've got browsers now accessing the, these APIs. We've got, uh, uh, we've got Internet of Things devices. And uh, our browsers also, s also uh, got upgraded a lot. We've got, uh, they can talk HTTP2 now. Um, so during my, when we started uh, implementing, uh, we, s we started GRPC using gRPC at our uh, company, uh, which in the back end just to uh, connect two, two systems together. So after that, I thought this is, this is a great uh, tool to use, but uh, um, what will it look like in the public, in the public API space? So first, let's uh, see what, what, what is gRPC. What it stands for, at, uh, it, started, it, sta it started out, version 1, the G st st stood for uh, gRPC Remote Procedure Call. <laughs> On version 1.4 today, it's, uh, the G st stands for gregarious, or remote procedure calls. Very strange. All right, on the, the official definition, uh, it's a high-performance open source in uh, universal RPC framework. I'm not sure why they chose the word framework, because it's... <laughs> Especially uh, yeah, in the JavaScript world, it's, it's, it's quite of a swear word these days. Uh, it came out of Google. It was based on their internal system that they use for decade, for, for years now uh, called Stubby. And they open sourced it last year, version 1, August 20, 2016. So just a, a short introduction, what, what is RPC? Basically, it's a paradigm where um, you can call a function from one address space over a network and uh, execute uh, implement a function uh, uh, execute a function that's implemented in another address space uh, for this to work for this to work both client and the server needs something that's called stubs which is uh, which handles the in message encoding and the trans uh, the transporting of the message so in the official definition it it says it's high performance what does it makes what what makes gRPC so effective uh, there's three components of so the the, the protocol buffers is uh, is what they use to encode the messages. It compiles down to a small uh, binary format, which is a lot smaller than the equivalent uh, text format uh, like like JSON. Um, <coughs> the transport layer it uh, uses by default is HTTP2. Uh, HTTP2 just a short uh, overview is it, it supports multiplexing. Uh, multiple requests of a one TCP connection, it can be the bi-directional, you get a response back before uh, you even send the next request, uh, while you're sending requests. Uh, in RPC systems, you usually have a, a interface definition language, and for uh, by default, um, gRPC uses, uses a, uh, something that they call the protofile. So, to create gRPC, uh, a whole system, you define the message in a protofile, which is the IDL. Then you generate stops from the protofile uh, through a, a tool called uh, ProtoC. There's all sorts of plugins for different languages that, that, uh, uh, that you can use um, with ProtoC. Then you implement the server code if you're writing the API, or, in, or you write the client code basic, uh, based on these imported uh, stops. 
So to demonstrate, I'm just going to give you an example uh, application. We're going to um, solve someone's problem here. It's, uh, it's a very difficult problem to solve. This guy needs more cowbell. <laughs> I hope everybody saw the video. <laughs> Otherwise, and so we're going to give him cowbell. <laughs> right, so uh, what is a cowbell service or a, a, a API would look like in a better definition? I've highlighted the three lines there. The RPC line, uh, the line that starts with RPC is the a uh, function called more cable. It takes a request message and returns a response. Uh, the request is basically just a quantity field and the response will be the total cables um, that's been added in the server. On, this on the server side, if you implement it, you basically create your own function and then you, what the concept is, you create your own function and you just re register your function to the service um, uh, implementation like this. So you create a gRPC server, you add the service, and then you tell it what function to use for, for the service definition. It's basically an interface, and then uh, and you tell it to, to start on port 9090, listening. Uh, calling the service, uh, creating a client, you also import the generated functions, and then you instantiate uh, one instance of it, tell it where the server is, and then you, do, you can start doing your calls. Other things that gRPC uh, supports, there's many different types that you can use, scalar types, in 64 JSON, I know in, uh, I think in 64 translates to a string. Uh, you can use bo uh, booleans and you can use uh, byte arrays. There's also containers that you can use, uh, like lists, uh, which is a what they call repeated fields, or maps, which is a basic key value pair. Um, you can also use there's other types, more complex ones like enumerations and, and one-off, which is like a C union. And uh, the methods you can define, uh, I think this is where gRPC shines, is, is streaming APIs. You can create streaming APIs, both server-side, client-side, or bi-directional. Now, uh, um, what this means is in the server-side streaming, for instance, if you create a request, uh, you send a request to the server, the server will, will give the client a streaming a stream to listen on, and as the server processes uh, messages, it will send it back over the stream, and and then and then the server will say, okay, that's it, that, that's it, I'm done, and then the call is is, is done. Um, so they just uh, expanded um, example of these concepts. There's a product with a product ID in 64, little the downs. <coughs> Field number six and is a you can uh, is a enumeration type. Uh, it can any be any of the statuses. The repeated one or the if you have one a zero or more tags and then uh, additional fields if you want to give it additional fields. It's a key value pair. Uh, I highlighted the stream functions there. So the first one is a server side stream. So you can see in the response you just add the stream keyword. If it's a bidirectional, you will have a stream in both uh, the request and response parameter. This is a one-off type. Uh, just if, if you want to focus on this, um, you can s give it any of those fields. So if you want to search by product status, you just give a value for product status and read in a request. This looks, uh, this ties in nicely with the Nelson's GraphQL. I think he's. Is uh, th this can get complex, uh, but uh, yeah, GraphQL can be it can be uh, you can also use the same structure here. So currently, gRPC supports ten languages out of the box. There's currently experimental uh, projects uh, with for Haskell and Swift, but uh, client-only languages. What this means is it gener you can only basically do gRPC calls from them as uh, Android, Java, Objective-C, or PHP, and then server and client languages. You can create both client and server in these languages, or all those C++, Python, Ruby, I've highlighted node there. Ten languages a lot, but what about uh, browser, uh, browser JavaScript? Uh, we've got Node.js, but if you want to call it directly from the, from the browser, there's, it's not possible at the moment. It's, uh, um, I don't think 
Google committed to this yet because uh, it's there's browser limitations and it, it, you know, it's quite uh, they have to do quite a bit um, to get this working. So, uh, uh, but there's hope. <laughs> Company called Improbable. They uh, they when they started uh, migrating from REST to, to R gRPC, they exactly happened to them. They got to the point where they want to start doing web apps, and then they realized it doesn't exist, so they created their own one, which later they realized Google is also working on, so they're working close together now. But basically, what it what it means is they've uh, created um, a TypeScript plugin for the Protoc compiler, uh, which will uh, like generate you generate code um, for all the other languages. Will now generate code for TypeScript as well. The gRPC web client package is basically what you import into your uh, TypeScript to that will do the underlying communication. <coughs> They also created proxy software because it's uh, the protocol works. It's not a native gRPC. It's uh, called gRPC Web. There needs to be a bit of a translation uh, between the protocols. So they've created proxy software, which is written in Go, which will take basically just take the gRPC Web call, translate it, and then proxy it to a gRPC service. So just to give you an example of the protocol. Uh, this is a book service where you can get one book or query a specific uh, one or more books uh, depending on the prefix. Uh, the TypeScript that gets generated and it can be used. So you import the TypeScript and then the, uh, you'll see gRPC invoke is the actual G what that calls the service, um, the gRPC service. So to deploy this, uh, currently you've got two options. You've got the standalone Go application written by Improbable, and or you can use Caddy from 0.10.4. Caddy is a new uh, so web server. If you don't, if you haven't heard of it, it's uh, um, something you, you should look at. It's quite an interesting web server. Um, it's got a gRPC plugin that can basically do this for you as well. Other gRPC features is. Uh, yeah, so a lot of things, yeah, so there's things that get generated and the underlying transport is, is chosen for you and uh, uh, the proto, proto buffers, but you, uh, this is pluggable, everything is pluggable in gRPC. You can also control uh, a lot of things from the client side and the server side. Uh, you can inject uh, middleware or what they call in interceptors uh, for logging, authentication. You can send metadata like you if you're used to. Uh, uh, REST uh, headers, uh, HTTP headers. So Node.js specific frameworks currently, I saw Condor.js and Molly.js. Just uh, haven't, I haven't looked uh, into it in, in depth, but basically they, they, they can help you with this middleware and uh, logging and error handling. Um, they wrap, wrap it around gRPC. There's also a tool called gRPC Dynamic Gateway, which uh, if you need to, you can expose your gRPC service as a REST service. It's based on the, on the gRPC Gateway uh, proxy, also in the gRPC ecosystem. gRPC adoption. Um, a lot of the companies basically do it in internally, mostly for microservices. Uh, communication, it's a... Uh, um, because it's got all these languages as well. Uh, there's a couple of names there. Uh, I think Square was the first one to really uh, incorporate it into their company. Um, Google Cloud exposed some of their APIs, like the PubSub and Cloud Storage currently as protofiles. You can, if you go to the GitHub Google APIs, then uh, you'll see a lot of proto definition files there that you can start using. Um, so, probably want to see a a demo of this. I'm going to be brave now. So basically what uh, uh, the demo, uh, the use case we have is it's a, uh, we're going to have a web, a web page where you can book a service. In the, uh, I'll run it through the gRPC web um, which will be served on, on Caddy and then it will be proxied to the service which waits for the, for this, um, for the, for the, for the request. 
another method I'm, I'm going to implement on the server side is a watch event, which basically a client can can uh, open up a request and then uh, it will send back a, s a stream. For in this case, it, it can help. The use case will be um, if new booking, uh, booking come in comes in, it can look up do a lookup of what sales um, salesperson uh, is associated with this car and maybe send up a notification and tell, tell the salesperson to phone the customer, do some feedback or, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, again, the proto definition file, it's two functions, make, make booking and watch. Just a, obviously the message could be a, a lot more, but I've just put the registration number, odometer and name. Uh, service implementation. Um, so we'll c I've uh, added just an anonymous function there, or a lambda, just to uh, uh, not to, uh, to fit on one slide. <laughs> um, so basically, it will receive the booking, and then it. And I've also uh, using the events package of NPM. It will emit the new booking to to the watch function, and then send it over the stream. The watch function will send it over the stream to whoever is watching. This is the the um, TypeScript client. I've, I've, I've decided to use Vue.js, uh, and then uh, I've had to import Vue typed to be able to call TypeScript from Vue. Uh, so we specify a couple of parameters there, and then our register booking is on the next slide. <coughs> so do some validation, and then we set up the request, and then do the call and wait for it to come back. Uh, the Watcher app is just uh, opens a request and then waits for any uh, messages sending o sent over the stream. And the KD file will uh, the the view page will be served on uh, on one port and then the other port will be the actual um, box. Sorry, the proxying of the gRPC call. Okay. Um. Server will run here. Okay, so I'll start the server. There it listens on 9090, and then I'll start the watcher. <coughs> Waiting for new bookings. If this works, you'll see lines in added on below this. Okay. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Everything worked. <laughs> and there's some validation. Obviously, you don't use the alert anymore <laughs> these days. Okay, back to the slides. So, after all this, uh, RPC uh, is, is an alternative to the rest. From my own experience, um, the developer experience of using of using GRPC is, is was was a bit of a uh, breath of fresh air. It's uh, nice to just create this one canonical file. Uh, it's easy to understand the file compared to something like w uh, WSDL or a Swagger document and you run through a compiler and it can generate code in, a in 10 different languages for you that you can sort of give to your clients or use yourself as well. Um, the uh, the from a if you're a client developer, what's nice about these, this generated code is you can you also have access to the service implementation so or, or the server side code, the stubs. So you can create your own stubs to to mock and do testing to. <laughs> also, another thing that, I've, that I like is the the it's it's part of your IDE, it's part of your language. Um, it's like calling it just a different m method in your language or uh, just calling a library. It's not, you don't have to switch over to HTTP thinking of verbs and um, resources, what resources. It's, it's like work, working with your, with your, your native language. Uh, this is, it's, it's secure f and faster and smaller by default. What I mean by this is uh, the protobufs or uh, messages that get compiled to b binary is very small. Um, and it can be can be passed much faster because it's in binary format. Um, 
compared to a equivalent uh, message in JSON or XML. And then the HTTP protocol, there's a lot of demos out there that show that it's much, much faster than HTTP T or HTTP T1. Um, uh, with the gRPC, you get some more options with. You can, you can stream, uh, you, can, uh, you can add streaming um, to your API. You can add complex types to your API, which is not always a necessarily good thing. You don't want to confuse your clients. And you can, uh, you can mix your, your, uh, your API. You, know, you don't have to fix be fixated on the resources and um, uh, CRUD operations on the resource. If you want to go be beyond that and do some actions in your API, then, uh, then you uh, with gRPC it's, it's easy. API integrity. Um, with protobufs, just by adhering to a few simple rules, you can uh, you have backwards and forwards comp compatibility of your messages. So you can add messages later on in your as your API is growing and it won't break anything, any clients using it um, currently. It's, uh, I know it's not always, uh, um, there's opinions about this, but it's strongly typed with static types. But what's nice about this is uh, you know what you're getting. You, from the server side is, you know, you ask for an integer, you're gonna get an in integer. It's not, uh, it's, it's enforced. From the client side, if you do something wrong, you know it before you even do a call to, to your server. Um, and you can't really deviate away from gRPC. You can't, uh, again, the server, server will know, it can only, it will get a um, uh, request from client side and if, uh, yeah, it's same from the, from the client side uh, back to the, to the server side. Obviously there's always trade-offs with new things. So if you've got to get a new coffee machine ground to ground to bean, uh, ach, bean, to <laughs> bean to cup type of machine. It's nice for the f first few days you get fresh coffee until you started needing to actually clean the machine and take out the grounds and uh, yeah. It's, uh, but yeah, with all new things, there's, there's trade-offs with, with gRPC, it's the same. Still a new technology, uh, there's teething problems. Documentation, although the, the documentation can get you up and running quite quick, um, if you want to go a bit further, more advanced topics, uh, it's not documented yet. There's also not, uh, there's no uh, standard standardization or idiomatic rules yet. Uh, everybody's got their own way of creating messages and uh, where do you put the protofile, how do you expose it to your clients, stuff like that. Uh, if you come from uh, something like REST, obviously you've got all these nice testing tools already. Postman and Call and uh, you can name all of them. Uh, with gRPC, it's still new, it's still, uh, but it will evolve eventually. Um, so, yeah, just to to end everything, uh, the <laughs> even though our API is today, you know, it's it's mainly REST and API uh, and SOAP. Um, and it's almost as if they are being used as default. Uh, there's a new play on the field now with Nelson's talk as well. It's GraphQL. You can you can look at something like gRPC. You don't always have to fix on on REST. Um, I'm not saying REST is a bad thing. It, it's got it uh, have its place. Um, with gRPC, you can even add more options to your API and uh, maybe resolve problems you're having with your existing APIs. If it comes to performance or we want to add streaming, and then uh, um, so when you next time you you choose on an API or when you start an API, just think step back and think: um, Am I just doing resource-based CRUD uh, CRUD on a resource, or am I if I want to go a bit further? Aren't I aren't I really doing RPC? Thank you very much. Before I take some questions, uh, I see there's a couple of prizes here. If, if anyone can tell me what uh, the G in GRP st stands for. Yes, correct. Do you have this book? Okay, I'm going to forget it. <laughs> you have it now. Any other questions? <laughs> No.
No questions. Uh, it's, I think uh, they in the background they're using the Fetch API. Fetch, yeah. Uh, uh, and they only and it only supports the um, server side streaming because I think the Fetch API don't support bidirectional yet. Mm -hmm. I think there's a question. Sorry, the, uh, just for the video, the question was, what uh, Fetch, wha what the uh, streaming API does the gRPC use or gRPC web use from the browser? Yeah, it's uh, HTTP2. Yeah, uh, and uh, with the gRPC, you can you can there's channel-based uh, authentication, so you can set it up per channel or per connection, or per call. You can even have different uh, meaning. Uh, you can use you can, you can use tokens, or w if you talk to something like a Google Cloud, you will use Google Cloud authentication. Okay, yes. Uh, the typings. The question is the typings. Is it? Uh, uh, coming from gRPC or is it coming from TypeScript? Uh, it's actually from gRPC and more specifically prot protocol buffers. Um, uh, because, yeah, like I said in that file, it's you're actually defining a protocol, protocol buffer message. The TypeScript you saw was derived from, the, from that uh, protocol buffer definition. Thank you. Thank you.